Thank you for joining us again on Call TV News. I am Frank Omalape. President Golok Jonathan has reacted to the ongoing moments of a plot to reinstall an interim government in the country with a stern warning for them to stay clear or face arrest and prosecution for treason. Jonathan, who was speaking during his visit to Dara Castina State, birthplace of the All Progressive Congress presidential candidate, Muhammad Buhari, retweeted that he is not desperate to remain in power. The president, who also visited the Emir of Dara, Mar Farouk, informed the monarch that the federal government had built 28 and major schools and a federal university in the state and will continue to work for the overall development of the country. A right RTV stunned politician Fessus Kayama has accused President Golok Jonathan of using religion and ethnicity to whip up sentiment in the run-up to the March 28 presidential election. Kayama made the allegation at a youth summit organized by the Presidential Campaign Council of the All Progressive Congress in Abuja. The human rights campaigner also claimed that Jonathan doled out nine billion naira to ex-militant to protect pipelines while Nigerian soldiers are not well equipped to fight insurgents. He argued that Nigerians are more divided along ethnic lines under the present administration than any time in recent history. Some of them said I betrayed, I've sold out our brother. I said, eh, our brother, when you smuggled 9.3 million dollars cash in a plane and you were going to South Africa, was I there? No. <laughs> when you were charging plane, some of you, Minister of Petroleum, charging plane for 10 billion, was I inside the plane? No. You are not saying your brother. Your brother indeed. When it comes to elections, leaders all over the world that have failed their people, check the, check the history, all over Africa. When leaders have failed their people all over the world, when it comes to elections, they always fall back on the base sentiment of ethnicity to survive. Yes, <laughs> when all arguments have failed, the last thing they will tell you that, ah, boy, he's our brother now. He's our brother. But millions of our compatriots are dying in the north. Millions of our compatriots because of failure of his simple sense as commander in chief to know how to protect lives and property. We are telling our people and have accepted the calling of our leaders that no violence for this election. And we're telling our youths, and also want to emphasize and use media to tell them that they should make sure that they shown violence because we are peaceful Nigerians, because there's nothing we can achieve without peace, and uh, there's nothing that we can achieve if we use violence. Barely six days to the 2015 general elections, another group with the name Odua Frontliners has urged youth to safeguard their future by voting for the PDP presidential candidate, President Golok Jonathan, for second term. Under state governor Lucia Gumimiko says the achievements of Jonathan in the education sector and youth empowerment speak volume of a leader who is interested in the nation's future. He stressed that Buhari has nothing to offer the Nigerian youth because his past government did nothing to support the growing Nigerian generation. A correspondent to Motalo, who witnessed a post-national conference summit for youth in the Asian city of Ibadan, has details. With a chat to map out a great future for themselves, these youth have been sensitized with reasons why they should vote for a Jonathan government in the forthcoming presidential poll. Speakers at the event say a Buhari-led government has nothing to offer Nigerians, stating that a party that boycotted the national conference has no good plan for the nation. There's no president in this country that has done as well as what is good luck and better job. For instance, the NBC are talking about being progressive. What is progressive about them? For the good of this country, we will be left. Promoting the youth at the same time, giving opportunities for the adults, for the old ladies. 
student representatives from selected tertiary institutions in the country who participated in the summit say they are better informed on what they stand to gain from a Jonathan-led administration having been presented with much information. The better option from what I hear today is Dr. Goodluck, Billy, Jonathan. The agenda for, for the youth is really good. So we are hoping they implement it. Undo State Governor Olushago Mimiko says the other correct by Buhari in the country cannot be forgotten in a hurry and as such should not be given the chance against the incumbent president who has done so much for the country. In terms of educational qualification, in terms of deep understanding of running the modern economy, and in terms of disposition towards liberal democratic efforts, where is Canada? The stage for who emerges the president in the elections has been set for the candidate who can present the better argument. Omotaiwalo, Court TV News, Ibadan. A group known as Foundation for the Advancement of Ethnic and Values, pushing their transformation agenda, has held a sensitization seminar for people of the Southeast Zone on how to access the 240 billion naira federal government grassroots empowerment fund. A correspondent, Ajibadi Aofeso, has details from Imo State. The event was tagged Ethics and Value for Accountability, Standards and Integrity. As organizers of the program defines its activities and essence of the symposium, special advisor to President Goodluck Jonathan on Ethics and Values, Sarah Jibril, in her address, says the event is aimed at promoting the transformation agenda of President Goodluck Jonathan through economic empowerment at the grassroots levels. Please stand at an attention now. This country is not for Scottish people. I am developing. I am, am transforming. I am transforming. How about Nigeria now? So we now get a strong ethical comment. Nigeria is teachable. Most of the participants said they have gained a lot as the facilitators the justice on the presentation on how participants can assess these loans. These processes will not have the same aid and objective other loans process have been going on because we have been trained on a particular project by the Bank of Industry. We had a training for three months. The police giving us loans, but at the end of the day, the high point of the event was when the Southeast coordinator of the foundation, Opera Michael, conversed for support for the re-election of President Gulag Jonathan for his good initiatives. So, Mr. President, The joy of the event, according to most participants, is that they are now well informed and certainly they will assess the loan for the empowerment. Ajibade Awofeso, Core TV News, Oweri.
The All Progressive Congress presidential campaign organization says the general fund administration plans to parade a fake leader of the Boko Haram Abubakar Shikau any moment from now as part of a pledge to gain leverage ahead of the election. It claims the fake Shikau will also name some notable opposition leaders including Muhammad Buhari as his pencils. Uh, EPC campaign council said in a statement by its spokesman Gaba Shehu that any purported capture of Abubakar Shikau will conflict with three previous claims that the insurgent leader had been killed. It described the move as a final campaign gimmick by the PDP to blackmail the opposition in order to remain in office. In the meantime, the All Progressive Congress presidential campaign organization has threatened to sue the PDP presidential campaign spokesperson Femi Fanikaldi over his claim that Buhari is getting campaign funds from terrorist groups including Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda and IS. It also said it will urge the court to seize Fanikaldi's international passport. APC campaign office said in a statement issued in Abuja that a spokesman for PDP's presidential campaign has one week to retract his defamatory comments or face the law. His spokesman, Garbashe, who noted that Buhari, like many Muslims across the world, does not approve of Al-Qaeda or IS, and neither is he a supporter of Boko Haram ideology. Meanwhile, 24 hours after the allegation by the People's Democratic Party that the opposition or progressive Congress plans to use an outside language radio station, uh, radio change to create crisis during the 2015 elections, the all progressive Congress says it's all a figment of the imagination of the PDP. The National Publicity Secretary of the Party, La Mohammed, who spoke on behalf of the party to newsmen in Lagos says the PDP should stop beating about the bush and find the imaginary station if it truly exists. Let the NDC go and locate it. And the most important about it, what we are saying, you see, if they are not the one that set it up, how come the one that is announcing it? Let me tell you, if they say an APC radio station, I will be the first person to know. Because I will use it. How can you go and set us up? And of course, who has who owns NBC? It's not the federal government. Let them tell Nigerians where that radio station is. The chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Public Account and the APC senatorial candidate for Lagos West, Solomon Adiola, has expressed his displeasure at the order of Inspector General of Police for voters to leave voting centers after voting, saying it is a plot to rig the election and undermine people's determination for change. The, uh, speaking at a town hall meeting with uh, Tagigi as part of his final tour of the largest senatorial district in Nigeria, Adela said that the people have to protect their votes by getting the result of the election at their various polling units before leaving. He added that the 2015 elections are about the future of Nigeria and voters must ensure that their future is jealously protected against those that want to manipulate elections. Adela said the Nigerian police force alone cannot protect the votes of the people and the people have to complement whatever and bias protection the police gives to ensure that the vote counts. You're watching Court TV News Hour. We'll take a break and I'll be back with more stories after this time out. Stay with us. We must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Martin Luther King Jr.
For more updates on our news and other stories, log on to Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash Court TV News. You can also follow at Court TV News NG. And our YouTube page is youtube.com forward slash Court TV. Leave a space, the news. As the elections draw near and the issue of violence again rarely its ugly head, political parties and candidates have signed a peace accord to ensure the free, fair and violence free elections in the state. Our correspondent Ajibadi Aofeso has more in this report. The Commissioner of Police, after addressing the audience, handed over the floor to the INEC Commissioner to educate the audience on what they need to know during and after the elections. With more than one or two uh, permanent border sites. Of course, these people were also prosecuting them, and we hope that you will not also attempt on that day to want to bring in people with fake PBCs or PBCs not belonging to them to want to come and vote. The content of the peace accord was read out by the police public relations officer of Imo State Police Command and immediately follows the signing of the agreement by the political party's chairman and their approval candidates. The wrong issue based campaigns at state and local government levels. In this, we plead to refrain from campaigns that will involve religious sentiments, ethnic and tribal profiling, both by ourselves and all agents acting in our names. Though some parties were denied signing as they refused coming with their party chairman and flag bearers as ordered by the police. One of such parties is the All Progressive Congress and two other. Some of the flag bearers who signed the peace agreement reacted to the ideology this way. Let me introduce our guest today. I would like to start with the GCC protocols. Let me, first of all, thank those who have organized this meeting for giving it the necessary to call us together to come and sign with the support. It is very, very important that we do it. We are all, by the signatures of the agreement to this government today, we have indeed been contracted to see that the election that we support coming in the state is wrong and peaceful, fair and equitable basis. That's what we have all committed ourselves to. I, I think very, very important that we thank the initiators of this wonderful idea. And this is important, just like that, to be honest with you, that there is no point to put on ourselves. I will conduct ourselves respectfully and respectfully. Nigeria and the people states is one of us. The business of politics is about the workers. The democracy understands the government of the people for the people and by the people. In his closing remark, the commissioner pleaded with the politicians to take the peace accord serious, as whoever violates the accord will be brought to book. Ajibade Awofeso, Core TV News, Oweri. The last may not have been heard of the June 2014 Ekiti governorship election as the Ekiti state government and political appointees of the Kaudi Faimi administration are now at loggerheads over the card monetization scheme. The government says the former political appointees are owing up to 109 million now, something the formal appointees disagree with. Our correspondent Rashi Rashid has details. The Ekiti state government earlier in the week announced its readiness to arrest political appointees who served under Kaudi Fayebi for not paying for the official vehicles which are monetized to them while leaving office. But this threat has become a subject of hot argument between both parties. It's irresponsible. It is not politics. It is criminal. If you buy something, you pay for it. You enter into an agreement, you honor your own side. The amount of money just in severance allowance alone like the state government is owing me is over four million. So when you do the math, even if you are not good at mathematics, that means the state is owing me 2.7 million. 
in outstandings to me, apart from salaries that were unpaid till October 15. The ex appointee say it is in law for beneficiaries in the scheme to pay 60% while the government shoulders 40%, claiming that the appointees have successfully paid up. The government, however, denies if such law exists, even as the deputy governor cries blue murder. When I left government as deputy governor, I'm entitled to at least two vehicles. The present governor withdrew all the vehicles for me. So, in fact, on the contrary, he is throwing me two vehicles. I think it's completely out of line that if something is done properly according to the law, anyone would think because they are holding a position for today that they can use that power to maltreat others. Such privileges are not contained in any statute book. What they do is go to the House of Assembly, which is peopled by men who would sign anything so long as it comes with the package. The state government insists that on these cars, the former political appointees owes up to 109 million naira, in which failure to offshoot will result to arrest, but the former aide supplier me dares the government. They will be arrested, and whatever vehicle they are riding at the time of arrest will be impounded. I'm not owing. I have said, most central members have said, and set them from us, and we all have a balance and Unless the police themselves have become partisan, then I am I'm waiting for the policeman that will come and arrest me for not committing any crime. As both parties remain on collision course, the coming days promises more drama. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Adoe Kiti. Away from that now, the non government have reportedly taken away the Emir of Bukuyukun in Zafra State from his palace late Friday. The whereabouts of the Emir is still unknown, but the State Commissioner for Information, Ibrahim Margaji, will confirm the abduction of the Emir, says the investigation is on by security agents to unravel the identity of those behind his abduction and secure his release. It's a call TV News Hour. We'll take another break now. I'll be back shortly. Join us again. You can now watch Call TV News Live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.calltvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Call TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV, leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station. And I'll sign out Jerry now. Jared Kurdish rebel leader Abdul Auklan has called for cuts to hold a historic Congress to end their decades-long and struggle against the Turkish authorities that has claimed tens of thousands of lives. In an early anticipated message for the traditional Kurdish New Year, Okalan, however, stopped short of setting out a clear roadmap for the summit of the Kurdish Workers' Party PKK rebels, as had been anticipated in some quarters. In a message read out by a pro Kurdish lawmaker to hundreds of thousands of supporters in the southeastern city, of the uh, Bakri. Ocalan said that the armed struggle had been painful and could no longer be maintained. The message was read out by lawmaker Siri Suraya, owner of the People's Democratic Party. Ocalan is serving a life sentence in the prison island of Idmarli in the Sea of Mamara following his sensational arrest by Turkish agents in Kaya in 1999. Auckland said that the Congress was timing he did not make clear will usher in a new era in relations between Turkey and the Kurds. The Turkish government welcomed the message with Deputy Prime Minister Bulent Arink describing the statement as positive in every way. The written message has been delivered by Auckland to a group of HDP deputies who visited him on Imrali on Thursday. And as it on Court TV News, our many thanks for watching. I'm Frank Omalabe. I'll see you again.